We are working on lesson 6-2 today. We're in our books on page 307, Estimating Decimal Quotients. And we're going to take a day to practice decimal estimation, just like we did whole number estimation when we're dividing, because estimating is very helpful. One thing it does, it helps us know if our quotient or our answer to a division problem is reasonable. Another thing it helps us do is it helps us place the first digit in our quotient. All right, so it is well worth the time to practice this concept. So if you would, go ahead and flip over to page 308. Our essential question to guide us through the lesson is how can you use estimation to find quotients? So we're going to use the um, visual learning example here to practice this concept with decimals. You guys have already been using estimation to divide whole numbers. I ask you that you always estimate first. Um, that helps you, especially with those larger divisors, it helps you figure out what your first digit might be in your question. You can adjust it from there. So Diego purchased a video gaming system for $473.89, including tax. About how much are his monthly payments if he wants to pay this off in one year? So we are just looking for an estimate with the keyword about how much. Our fifth grade helper lets us know that we use division to find equal groups. All right. And the two ways that we divide, um, we um, use estimation to divide, are the same as with whole numbers. We can either use rounding or we can use compatible numbers. So let's look at the rounding all right, we can estimate $473.89 divided by 12 by rounding to the nearest 10. 12 rounds to the nearest 10. I'll tell you what, boys and girls, if you have mastered your multiplication facts, you can actually leave it 12 and have a closer estimate. All right, I like to leave anything here 1 to 12 as is because I know my multiplication facts. All right. And if we do that, then we are going to look at a number close to 47 that is divisible by 12. All right. And they're saying, let's see, they're saying that we're going to use, oh no, sorry, that is divisible by 10. That's right. So we're going to leave this 470 divided by 10 and get 47. All right, so each monthly payment will be about 47. All right, look at the next way. The next way we're going to use compatible numbers. All right, and if we use compatible numbers, <clears throat> we are going to leave 12, 12. We know that 12 times 4 is 48. So why don't we change this 47 to 48? We would make this whole number 480, divide it by 12 to get an estimate of 40. All right. So basically, we're not even worried about the decimal part of our numbers here. We are looking at the whole number part in order to help us estimate. OK. And then which estimate would be closer? Well, I'm going to go with estimate using the compatible numbers because of the fact that we did not change that second number, the divisor at all. It stayed 12, okay? So if we keep our original dividend and divisor closer in numbers in our estimate, then we're going to have a closer estimate. All right. Our guided practice problems on page 309, we are going to be estimating each quotient using rounding or compatible numbers for numbers three through eight. So starting with number three, I'm going to look at the divisor first. Six and eight tenths is a decimal number, so I'm going to round it to the nearest whole number, which would be seven. A number 242 that is divisible by seven is 42. So in I get the estimated quotient of 6. 102 divided by 9 and 6 tenths. Again, I'm going to round the divisor to the nearest whole number. It is 10. 
And I know that a number very close to 102, that's divisible by 10, is 100. So 100 divided by 10 gives me an estimated question of 10. All right, number five, my divisor is a whole number. And I know my math facts, 0 through 12. So I'm going to actually leave this four. And a number very close to 48 that is divisible by four is 48. I'm just looking at the whole number part. And 48 divided by four is 12. So I have an estimated question of 12. All right, number six. Again, it's very much like number five. The divisor is a whole number. I know my seven facts, so I'm going to leave it seven. A number very close to 72 that is divisible by seven is 70. So 70 divided by seven gives me an estimated question of 10. All right, number seven, look at that divisor. It is a decimal number. So we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. That gives me two. A number very close to 15, that's divisible by two. I'm going to use 16. 16 divided by two would give me an estimated quotient of eight. And number eight, I am looking at a divisor that is a decimal number. So I'm going to round it to the nearest whole number. I know that a number close to that whole number 44 that's divisible by 6 is 42. 42 divided by 6 gives me an estimated question of 7. All right, so we could use different sets of numbers to round or we could use different pairs of compatible numbers, but no matter what we're using, our estimated quotients should be very close to one another. For numbers 9 and 10, Let's take a look at these. They've kind of given us a little bit of a problem starter. So they're telling us that if we estimate 64 and 5 tenths divided by 12 and 3 tenths using rounding, that they are going to round 12 and 3 tenths to 10. All right. I guess they're not very comfortable with their 12 tables. And they're going to make 64 and 5 tenths into 65. And they know that if you divide 10 into 65, it is going to go six times, right? Six times 10 is 60. And then there are going to be five tenths left over. All right. So six and five tenths. I think it would have been easier. They're calling it compatible numbers. But my rounding strategy would have been to make this 12. And then... I would have made my next next number maybe even 72 and made this 72 divided by 12. Or I could do, um, well, I could do 60 divided by 12. That would be even better, wouldn't it? Which is what they're doing with compatible numbers. All right. So they're leaving the 12 and 3 tenths 12 and they're using 60 and they're getting an estimate of 5. Again, we can use different numbers. We can use either strategy, either rounding, or we could use the compatible numbers. I think it's always good to start by rounding your divisor first to the nearest whole number and then looking for some kind of a, a compatible number or a multiple of your divisor within that dividend. Numbers 11 to 19, I'm going to suggest that you pause the video, that you try a few, as many as you're comfortable with, and then come back and look at my solutions. Again, we might be a little bit off because of the numbers that we use in lieu of the actual divisor and dividend, but our questions should be very close to each other. Looking at numbers 11 to 19, you can go ahead and pause your video again and check your work. I want to draw your attentions to number 12 and number 18. I actually used our concept from yesterday's lesson, dividing by powers of 10, in order to get a very close estimate with those. Take a look at number 12. I remember a lot of children in class 
made this 90 one hundredths one whole and they made nine and six tenths ten and they did ten divided by one is ten. But using yesterday's lesson, we could leave nine and six tenths, nine and six tenths, because if we divide any number by one, it equals itself. All right. Number 18, the same thing. I had a lot of children last year that rounded nine and three tenths up to 10. Then they used 10 or 20 as their compatible number and they got an estimate of one or two. But if you understood and mastered yesterday's concept of dividing by powers of 10, you would have noticed you could have left this, um, you could have rounded this 15 and 66 hundredths. Actually, you could have left it itself. I even did something a little different. And if you multiply or divided by a power of 10, you could have had the estimate one and five hundred sixty six thousandths. All right. I made it 16, but I still use that same concept and divided by 10 to get one and six tenths. So all of our estimates are very close. There's no right or wrong way to do an estimate. All right. It's just to help you when you actually do the division in our next several lessons. It helps you to see if your answer is reasonable. It also helps you place that first digit in the quotient, which sometimes it's hard just to get started without having to do a whole lot of scratch work. All right, boys and girls, we have estimated quotients today using two strategies. We either used rounding or compatible numbers or a little bit of both of those strategies together. All right, I am looking forward to seeing how you master your assignment with this concept. Have a great day.